restless Yellowstone caldera is truly living, breathing, and every once in a while it burps. In two of the really large eruptions of Yellowstone, so much material comes out, a lot of things can happen that we're not really ready for. Nature's beauty is undeniable, but there's a dark side to its majesty that can be deadly. Yellowstone, a land of pristine wilderness and breathtaking beauty, has always been a haven for nature lovers. But now, something sinister is brewing beneath the surface, and it's causing a stir that could shake the very foundations of this iconic national park. We're not talking about a minor disturbance here. This is a colossal volcano that's waking from its slumber and the recent sudden uplift of the ground has sent shockwaves through the scientific community. Yellowstone's history of sporadic eruptions is well known, but this unprecedented and terrifying event has taken everyone by surprise. As park officials take drastic measures to ensure visitor safety, the question that remains on everyone's mind is, what will happen next? Will this slumbering giant awaken and unleash an unimaginable catastrophe? Or will it return to its dormant state leaving us all to breathe a sigh of relief. Join us on a perilous journey as we delve into the mysteries of Yellowstone and uncover the truth behind the recent closure of the park. Let's begin. If you're planning a visit to Yellowstone National Park, don't let the breathtaking beauty and tranquil surroundings fool you. Behind the facade of picturesque landscapes and serene wildlife lurks a ticking time bomb that has scientists and park officials alike on high alert. Dating back to 1872, Yellowstone was the first national park in the world and is home to a geological marvel that's been under close watch since 1923. The Yellowstone Caldera, a massive basin that sits atop the park's eponymous volcano, is no ordinary geological feature. Known as a supervolcano, this sleeping giant has the potential to unleash an eruption so massive it will make the 1991 Mount Pinatubo eruption look like a firecracker in comparison. According to the Natural History Museum in London, the Yellowstone caldera could potentially discharge over 1,000 cubic kilometers or 240 cubic miles of material, a magnitude 8 eruption on the Volcanic Explosivity Index. And if that number alone doesn't make you break into a cold sweat, consider this. The 1991 Mount Pinatubo eruption, one of the world's most powerful in recent history, was only rated a 6 on the same index. To put it in perspective, if the Yellowstone supervolcano were to blow its top, it would unleash a cataclysmic event that could be over 100 times more powerful than the eruption at Mount Pinatubo in 1991, which was considered one of the most catastrophic volcanic eruptions in recent history. The destructive power of such an event is hard to fathom, and it's not just the people in the immediate vicinity who would be affected. The effects would be felt worldwide, potentially triggering a volcanic winter that could have devastating consequences for the entire planet. The ground beneath Yellowstone may seem peaceful, but recent activity indicates that the sleeping giant may soon awaken from its slumber. The ground has been swelling and rising, a sign that the magma may be cooling and hardening, but also a warning that the supervolcano is preparing for something big. To prepare for the worst, scientists are examining the last three eruptions of the Yellowstone volcano to predict what we might expect from its next eruption. Let's take a journey back in time to the largest eruption in Yellowstone's history, which occurred 2.1 million years ago and ejected over 580 cubic miles of material. To put that in perspective, that's over 200 times the amount of material that erupted from Mount St. Helens in 1980. The eruption wreaked havoc beyond the confines of Yellowstone National Park, with the magma and volcanic debris engulfing most of the continental United States and even being found thousands of miles away in Louisiana. But the 2.1 million year old eruption wasn't the only one to leave its mark on Yellowstone. 1.3 million years ago, the Mesa Falls eruption created Henry's Fork Caldera, located to the west of Yellowstone, generating 67 cubic miles of volcanic material. And then there was the most recent eruption, the Lava Creek eruption, which expelled less material but managed to cover a larger surface area. The Yellowstone eruption was estimated to be a thousand times more powerful than St. Helens, spewing out an overwhelming deluge of ash, molten rock, and lethal gases high into the sky. The sheer force of the blistering magma and toxic fumes bulldozed everything in their path, leaving behind nothing but destruction and ash-coated terrain. This eruption was a chilling reminder of the sheer power 
that lies beneath the surface of Yellowstone National Park. The caldera that formed from the eruption stretches 30 miles wide and 45 miles long, a scar that still exists to this day. The remnants of the eruption are still visible in the Lava Creek Tuff, and the ground continues to rise and swell, indicating that the monster may be ready to awaken once more. While we all hope for the best, the geological records cannot be ignored, and experts cannot rule out the possibility of another eruption. But not all volcanic activity is created equal. While we tend to think of volcanic eruptions as massive explosions, with lava flowing everywhere, there are many different types of volcanic events, ranging from minor to catastrophic. For instance, hydrothermal explosions, which are steam and hot water eruptions, are less severe than a full-scale eruption, but can still be dangerous. One type of volcanic activity that is less destructive is lava flows. Unlike explosive eruptions, lava flows occur when molten rock oozes out of cracks and slowly flows over the ground. While still a type of magmatic eruption, they're not as catastrophic as a full-scale caldera-forming eruption. Fortunately, Yellowstone has only had one caldera-forming eruption, but it was a doozy, occurring over 600,000 years ago. Yellowstone also had a lava flow about 70,000 years ago, and there were approximately 30 additional lava flows following the major eruption. While experts remain hopeful that the Yellowstone supervolcano will remain dormant for the foreseeable future, it's important to remember that we are at the mercy of the unpredictable and powerful forces of nature. Even though the last lava flow in Yellowstone occurred thousands of years ago, visitors can still witness its evidence through the rock layers and lava strata in the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. However, recent discoveries by authorities at Yellowstone have raised concerns. They found a massive magma reservoir throbbing deep beneath the surface that could lead to less severe volcanic events like hydrothermal explosions or lava flows. The heightened activity has sparked debates about the likelihood of a full-scale eruption and its potential devastation. Volcanoes depend on magma, and it's the explosive component that causes them to erupt. The Yellowstone supervolcano is filled with magma, but not all of it can erupt because it contains both solid and liquid components. Scientists have used a new technique to analyze the 20-year-old seismic data to determine the amount of molten rock that could potentially erupt if the volcano were to blow. According to their study published in the journal Science, the upper magma reservoir contains more liquid magma than previously thought, ranging from 16 to 20 percent. Previous estimates had put the figure at about 10 percent. Brandon Schmant, a geophysicist at the University of New Mexico and one of the study's authors, stated, For two million years, there's been a massive magmatic system there. It does not look like it's going away, that's for sure. Scientists are eager to understand the future of the Yellowstone volcano and are studying the amount and location of molten rock near the surface. Unlike tanks of constantly liquid rock, magma reservoirs are like mazes with crystalline boundaries that contain the hot, buoyant liquid. The more molten rock there is, the higher the likelihood of an eruption. Earlier research on Yellowstone showed two magma reservoirs, one containing viscous magma located 3 to 10 miles beneath the surface, and another containing more substantial amounts of runnier magma, found 12 to 30 miles down. It was previously believed that only about 2% of the deeper reservoir and 5 to 15% of the shallower reservoir was made up of molten rock. Volcanologists monitor earthquakes as one of their primary methods to identify magma reservoirs. Seismic waves travel through the depths of the Earth before being picked up by surface seismometers, and their speeds change when they pass through hot and partially molten rock. By analyzing the travel times of seismic waves, scientists can unlock a wealth of information about the location and properties of magma reservoirs. However, this technique is not without its limitations. Seismic waves can sometimes bend around pockets of molten rock, and the assumption that they travel in a straight line from the quake to the seismometer is not entirely accurate. As a result, crucial information about volcanic activity can be missed. In their latest research on the Yellowstone volcano, scientists took a different approach. Instead of relying on conventional seismic techniques, they turned to a 20-year archive of seismic noise that captured sounds from the ocean, human activity, and the wind. With the help of sophisticated computer models, the team was able to simulate how seismic waves travel through the Earth and unlock the volcano's elusive molten rock. The results of their study were astonishing. The team discovered that seismic waves were significantly delayed 
when traveling through a depth of two to five miles, which corresponds to the upper portion of the shallower magma reservoir of the Yellowstone volcano. This delay indicates that up to 20% of the entire reservoir may be liquid magma. This finding has raised concern among scientists about the potential for a full-scale eruption in the future. In recent years, the frequency of earthquakes in the Yellowstone area has increased. The park experiences up to 3,000 tremors each year, although some are too insignificant to be reported. The discovery of the vast amount of liquid magma in the Yellowstone volcano has added to the worries of volcanic experts. The increased activity has sparked widespread discussion about the likelihood of a catastrophic eruption and how destructive it would be. Tons of magma is potentially being injected into the Yellowstone volcano's chamber. The undeniable evidence of increased volcanic activity, as shown by the continuously growing dome-shaped uplift, has forced Yellowstone officials to take extreme measures to protect visitors and researchers by closing the park. The current closure comes as a stark reminder of the potential risks of living in close proximity to an active volcano and what would happen if it were to erupt. However, the consequences of a full-scale volcanic eruption go far beyond closing the park's gates. The potential risks of the Yellowstone volcano eruption would be catastrophic and could result in evacuating entire cities, and in the worst-case scenario, residents in adjacent states could be forced to relocate far from the park. According to experts, a Yellowstone eruption would affect the entire United States, with severe consequences felt across the globe. But even evacuating the park and surrounding areas might not be enough, given the sheer size of the potential eruption. A Yellowstone supervolcano eruption would release thousands of times more ash and lava than a typical volcanic eruption. It could change the world's climate and even affect the planet's orbit around the sun. Additionally, ash clouds from a Yellowstone eruption could trigger a volcanic winter that would lower global temperatures, resulting in crop failures and food shortages. While scientists continue to monitor the Yellowstone volcano's activity and assess potential risks, it's clear that the consequences of a full-scale eruption would be far-reaching and devastating. The current closure of the park serves as a reminder that we must remain vigilant and prepared for such a possibility. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what do you think should be done to prepare for a potential eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano? And how can the risk to human lives and property be minimized? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here, which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one.